In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Can-Am Riker Elka suspension. Uh, this is stage five for the Riker 900. Uh, the tools you're going to need is going to be a 15 millimeter open end wrench, a 19 millimeter open end wrench, a spring puller, a socket set, or a uh, you're going to need a ratchet. A ratchet. You're going to need a 16 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket, a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, plenty of extensions. You're going to need to get out quite a ways from under the bike with your wrenches. And you're going to need a torque wrench. Okay, so that's all the tools that you'll need in the video. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Today's video is sponsored by Elka Suspension. You can go check out their website, us.elkasuspension.com. If you're in the UK, it is uk.elkasuspension.com. Elka Suspension is one of the leading manufacturers in suspension components. They make suspension for all different types of vehicles, snowmobiles, motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, side-by-sides. They pretty much make a suspension for just about everything out there. And if you don't see one on their website, call them and talk to somebody. I'm sure they will come up with something to help you out. You can order stage one all the way up to stage five for most applications. Stage five being completely adjustable with adjustable dampening, spring tension, and rebound. If you're serious about your ride and you want the highest quality suspension on the market, take a look at Ilka Suspension. What's up everyone, this is Bill. Today we're going to be doing an installation video. This is the Elka suspension. This is the stage five rear suspension for the Can-Am Riker 900. Uh, they also sell the suspension for the Riker 900 Rally. Okay, so this has got all your different adjustments, your low speed, high speed compression, uh, rebound, uh, spring preload, has a bump stop down here. Everything in everything, every component on here is replaceable as well. And these are built to order based on rider weight. And uh, they come pre-assembled based on your instructions. There'll be a link in the description to go purchase this and to go check out their website. It does come with full instruction with pictures. And then it does come with an owner's manual as well. Um, so it's your owner's manual talking about each different com uh, adjustment and what it does. Okay, so there'll be a link in the description to go check out my unboxing video. Uh, this is going to be the installation video. So I'll show you what all your, what the basis of what you're going to have to do. And then uh, we're going to go through each step on here and get the old shock off and put the new one on. Towards the end of the video, I'll let you know how long exactly it took us. And if there's any troubleshooting that we had to do, I'll let you know that as well. Okay, so obviously, there's a lot to get done here as far as taking this off. So, it does have instructions for front as well as the back. So we got to remove the screw securing the clamp of the shock absorber uh, reservoir if you have the rally. Okay, so removing the shock absorber, you do have to remove your, you have to drop your exhaust also on the rear. And we're going to be taking this little trailing arm, we're going to be taking that out as well. And it stays connected, we'll connect it back to the aftermarket shock when we put it back on there. Okay, so we're going to get started, and uh, we'll see how things go. First thing we're going to do, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the bike in the air. I'll show you how we did that, and then uh, we are going to loosen these two front bolts. 
that is the pivot arm front bolt and the shock absorber front bolt. So we're going to loosen those. And then, okay, so after we release, re loosen these two bolts, we are going to remove the exhaust. There's two springs up front that come off the header pipe and then one bolt underneath or up on top of the actual muffler. And uh, once we get that off, we should be able to loosen these off of the control arm. So if you loosen the bolt here and the bolt here, I'll show you it on the bike. You should be able to drop the suspend the spring along with the control arm and it'll look like that okay so let's take a look at the bike okay so here at the bike this is how we got it up in the air what we did was we put the jack here with a rag on it so you don't scratch it up on this frame assembly here uh raise it up you're what you're gonna end up doing is tipping the bike sideways one of the front tires is gonna come up get yourself some rags Step them underneath here and put a jack stand towards the back here. So as long as you're in between this first and second notch for your pegs, when you do the other side, you'll end up with the back tire off the ground. Okay, and then for the suspension, or for the uh, muffler, that's the bolt I was talking about. That right there has to come off in order to drop this whole muffler assembly. This is all part of the swing arm. Okay, so we'll take a look at the other side. Okay, same thing going on here. We raised it up from here and then put our jack stand back here. Back tire came off the ground, front tires went back down. Now, if you look, the first thing we're gonna do after, you're gonna loosen these two bolts so the whole thing can pivot a little easier. Okay, and the first thing you're gonna need to do after that is right under here, under the left side of the bike. You'll have a couple springs. You're gonna use a spring puller. They'll go sit right here in these notches. So it'll sit right here and right here. Okay, and they are very heavy duty springs. They are very tight. So use yourself a spring puller, pull it towards the front of the vehicle and they should come off no problem. Okay, so now that we got the springs off the front, and we got the bike in the air. We got those two bolts on the other side. They're loosened. We're going to pull this bolt out. We're going to set something underneath the muffler here so it doesn't just fall on the ground. We're going to take that bolt out right there, and we're going to lower that and get rid of it out of the way so we can show you more of what's on there. So uh, we'll get started on that. Okay, so this bolt that we're about to take off right there is going to be a 15-millimeter bolt, and the torque specs, when you put it back together, it's going to be 35 foot-pounds, plus or minus four. That's what it says per BRP instructions. Okay. Okay, when you remove this bolt and you put it back on, per BRP, that bolt is 23 foot-pounds plus or minus three. Same with the lower one on the other side of that, of that's actually housing this, holding the suspension. Okay, 23 plus or minus three. Okay, so you can see the, uh, control arm which is this back here okay so there's one bolt here one bolt here one bolt above it that's actually holding the suspension so like I said the one above it is 23 foot-pounds plus or minus three the middle bolt is 15 foot-pounds plus or minus three so that's that one right there that's centered and then the bottom bolt that is 77 foot-pounds plus or minus 11 Okay, so those are, that is literally all of the torque specs that you'll need for assembling and disassembling this whole project. Okay, so we'll get started. that goes up inside of here okay, and that little plate is going to be on top with the bolt okay so here's what it looks like without the exhaust 
and you see up there the header pipe so now you can clearly get to these bolts much much easier and when you go to remove these bolts the swing arm can drop way down the exhaust is not going to be a factor as to being in the way okay so next thing to do is going to be fire it up. get those out possibly fire it up Okay, so let's show you where we're at here. Like we were saying, this bolt that holds right here is extremely tight. We had to use a lot of pressure. You want to be careful because inside this arm that you're going to be removing is a set of needle bearings. Okay, so be very careful with that. You see right inside of there, they're needle bearings. Okay, and then you're going to come to the other side. You do not have to take this bolt, this bolt out. You don't have to take it out. You can angle it at an angle and be, yep, just like that. Be very careful, go very slowly, and you can get that back in there. So now we're gonna take that to the workbench and put it in the vise. Um, here, pull that out. So this side is gonna go in the vise, and then we're gonna get this bolt out and bolt the new suspension on. And yeah, there's a, Little shaft in here, needle bearings inside here. So you want to be very careful with this whole assembly. Okay, so let's get it in the vise. Okay, so here's what came up with. Now keep in mind there's a shaft in each end of this little arm, and there's needle bearings in both sides. Okay, so what we've done here is put the nut side or the uh, bolt side in the vise. You could also use an impact and do this. Have one person hold the that with a wrench if you had an impact and then this is a 15 millimeter nut so we're going to wrench that off there uh, we're just going to use the impact gun but i just want to show you this is what their instructions show you to do okay so that's what we're going to do what they said to do I'm just showing you guys on video that's how it should look we taped all this off so these bearings can't get damaged or go anywhere no dust or dirt can get in there okay we'll get that off Okay, so as you can see, we have this torque down. Uh, we went with 26 foot-pounds. Torque specs say 23 plus or minus 3. So we went 26 foot-pounds. It can still move freely. So important to note, the, the rebound adjustment knob is going to be towards the inside of the vehicle. So this is going to sit, if this is the left side, that's going to be on the right side. Okay, then this is going to get moved over to the right side of the bike and sit like that. And you have this clamp right here. Okay, so this clamp is going to go around this bar. Okay, that clamp's going to go around that bar, and it's going to clamp shut. So it'll clamp shut around that bar like this. And then you'll have one screw that goes in right here. And then we'll show you. Okay, once you have your cylinder in there, this is going to go down. So this goes in between there, that goes there, and then the this rubber washer that they give you goes in between here. So if you open that up, the rubber washer is going to go right here, then the clamp. And then your other screw goes on the outside here. This hole, this notch cut out is where the hose is going to be. Yep. So it's going to be something like that. But it'll be spun the other way. It'll be spun around like this. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get that all assembled. Okay, so when you're assembling this bracket that holds the remote reservoir, okay, here's the other piece to it. You can still get it on down here like this, and you'll still be able to flex this quite a bit. You'll be able to close it up. Okay, so you do not have to remove this plastic. They say it will help, but you don't have to. There is a hole on the back side, and there's a little peg on the inside of here of this plastic piece that peg has to go in the hole on the metal tube okay that way it can't move around and every riker is going to have that because the uh, rally the 600 and 900 they well, maybe not the 600 i'm not sure but the rally and the 900 have the same frame so you're going to have that hole regardless if you had one of these on your rally or not okay so now we're going to get this uh, rear shock on 
Okay, so one more quick little tip before putting this on the bike. Loosen this guy up, this Allen wrench, leave it loose so you can adjust this while it's on the bike. If you get it from, from the factory, it may be rotated in a position to where you can't get to that Allen head. Okay, so the best thing you can do is just loosen up the Allen head and then you can use the tool that they provide. They have provided you with the Allen wrench as well. Okay, you'll be able to rotate this while it's on the bike and get that Allen head to where you can get to it after it's installed. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we rotated ours this way. We're going to see if that works, but we're going to leave it loose. So that way we don't get it on the bike and get in a position where we can't rotate this anymore. So then we're going to rotate it where we can get to that Allen wrench. And then I'll show you what the best uh, scenario is for that. Okay, so we got the shock on there loosely. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get over there and get that shock orientated in there. You're going to set it in here at an angle and come in nice and slow and it should drop in there with that lower control arm attached to it. Okay, so you're gonna get that in there loosely and then you're gonna come to this side and you're gonna mount this gas shock. You will have a gap here. This is not something that is extremely tough right here. It'll try to loosen up out of here. You can see this white area. That's because that's stretched just to get it on there as loose as it is. Okay, so be very careful putting that on. And this, depending on where they orientated that sticker, we no matter what we do this will not line up how it shows in the picture where it says stage five in this window because you do have this nipple back here and this cut out of plastic okay this this cut out in the plastic is where this fits it's pushed down as low as it can go right now and that's how it fits so i'm a little a little mad that that doesn't line up where it says stage five you can see here on their picture, clear as day, in the window, it says stage five. Okay, but that is simply an orientation of that sticker. The sticker on mine is sitting up higher, whereas on this one, it's sitting down lower. Okay, we do have it in there correctly. So yeah, on the one that I got, the sticker is just moved in a different spot. I mean, you could technically probably warm it up with a heat gun a little bit and remove that sticker and then put it, orientate it back. But it's just aesthetic. It's not gonna affect the functioning of the vehicle. So once we got it orientated in there, we got the gas shock, the gas uh, reservoir mounted, right? And then we put this bolt in first, loosely. That will allow you to orientate and maneuver it so the bolt above it that brass this bolt here okay that will allow you to move it around and get that one in loosely without yeah without damaging or damage the, and remember there's needle bearings in both of these so you want them they should slide in nice and easy you shouldn't have to use a hammer you shouldn't have to force it in at all okay and then once we got those in we were able to come over here and lift up I lifted up on the back wheel and he was able to slide this bolt through here loosely okay so now and like I said here's where our Allen wrench lines up you can rotate that spring and tighten down your Allen wrench so you can rotate the spring so it says Elka up on top and then you want to rotate this that's why I said leave it loose rotate this to where you can get to that Allen wrench without a or Allen head without any problems and then you're gonna tighten everything back down so we're gonna get it all back assembled put the bike on its own weight, and then we are gonna adjust this ring where we can get to it easily. Okay, so now we've got everything torqued back down to spec. We're gonna go back through and wipe down all the grease and whatnot. Uh, next thing to do is put the exhaust back on. So that will be your last step. Okay. So it's 77 plus or minus 11, 23 plus or minus 3. Same with the bolt at the other end. Same with the bolt that holds this bracket at the other end. And then the one in the middle, the big brass bolt, is 15 pounds plus or minus 3. Plus or minus three. Okay, that's all your torque specs. 
Okay, so here we are. Everything is back together. Remember, you have this bolt up here. It's going to be 35 foot-pounds. Plus or minus four. Okay, and that's the one bolt that holds that big muffler on. And then you have your two springs and your gasket for the exhaust up on the header. Okay, so you can use a spring puller to put those back on once you get this guy sitting up there loosely. Then you're going to tighten that and torque that down. So everything is assembled. Everything is back together. So we'll come back after we put a few hundred miles on it for a little review and a comparison to so I can tell you what I thought of the stock versus this. Okay, once you have full weight on the bike, uh, you know, the its own weight, then come back through, get this to where you can get to it easily with an Allen wrench that will allow you to adjust this on the fly. So we would go, if we want to go tighter, we'd go one full turn back to here and then tighten this back down with the Allen wrench. Okay, and you can keep that in your tool bag on the bike. Okay, so there we go. We're going to take it for a ride and see how she does. But I can already tell you it's a lot stiffer than stock just by putting some weight on it. Anyways, that's it for my video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, link in the description below to go check out their website. There will be a direct link to this actual Stage 5 shock for the uh, Riker 900. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All my contact information is down below. If you have questions or run into any troubles, you can either reach out to Elka Suspension at their 1-800 number, or you can reach out to me on Facebook Messenger, Instagram, or Twitter. Okay, if you guys hit the like button, that helps YouTubers out tremendously. This YouTube has a little hiccup in its system, so make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. You guys have a good day. This is going to be a roughly a three... Three hour, you could probably do it in an hour if you knew exactly what you're doing. If you follow the steps in the video in order, you'd probably do it in an hour, but three hours max. Okay, so we've put about 100 miles on the bike now, riding two up with the new Elka rear suspension on there. And Guys, let me tell you, this thing is well worth the money. You get what you pay for. This thing is absolutely amazing now. The, it's, it's way more comfortable with both of us on it. Uh, we're not able to bottom out the fender. I mean, we bounced up and down trying to bottom it out. You can see the damage that was done with that stock uh, shock on there. With the stock shock at the fifth setting maxed out, we were still have bottomed this thing out so many times that this rear fender is destroyed. So the goal now is to replace the fender. We could not bottom this thing out. Okay, so just it, it just feels like there's more travel. It's a, it's the the high speed and low speed compression that it has is absolutely amazing because you can really feel it. You know, if you're going around a corner or over a speed bump slowly or anything. You feel that nice soft cushion, but when you hit a speed bump, when you hit like a pothole really fast, it just soaks it up. And it soaks it up instantly. And it's no longer, you know, gut wrenching like, oh my God, we're just gonna hurt my back as soon as we hit it. So, absolutely phenomenal job by Elka Suspension. Uh, if you guys are looking for the best of the best, go check these guys out. This thing is no joke. That suspension is gnarly. And just the adjustability that you have is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, so next step is to uh, put the front ones on. Okay, so anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the video. I wanted to give a big shout out to Elka Suspension for sending that out to me to do an installation video for you guys and an unboxing video. So link in the description to go check this out and purchase it for yourself. And remember, there's stage three, four, and five for the rear, and uh, a bunch of different stages for the front. You know, so you can you have options. You don't have to spend nine hundred dollars. You can buy one of the lower priced ones, and you're still going to have an amazing ride. And it's still going to be built to order based on your weight and whether or not you ride two up. You know, and are you taking it to the track? Are you doing touring, sports? You know, there's all kinds of options when it comes to them making it for you and it comes right out of the box. We did not put any adjustments on this thing. Right out of the box, set up the way I ordered it. It is perfect. So anyways, big shout out to those guys. 
Go check all the links in the description. Also, my unboxing video showing everything you get uh, will be in the description as well. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. You have a good day. Peace.